Hey guys, today I'm working on a 2011 Dodge Ram 2500 with the diesel. Um, customer complaint is poor AC performance. So typically on these, I just hook the machine up, verify my pressures, and then I just do a recovery. Um, doing this lets me verify that I have the right charge in the system. And sometimes even just a little bit, 10% above or below the proper charge will cause all kinds of grief. So sometimes it's faster for me just to evac recharge, put the right level in. If I still have an issue, or if the charge was correct, then I go a little bit deeper. That has already been performed. This vehicle is about a half pound low. With the proper charge in there, the pressures still don't seem right. So I'm gonna walk you through a diag. I had another truck just like this a couple weeks ago doing something similar, only a little more severe. Um, so I got a feeling I know what the problem is, but we'll walk through this together. So we're sitting about 100 PSI on our static pressures. The vehicle's been sitting for about an hour. Um, the underhood temperature is probably a little over 100 degrees. That's why we're seeing elevated pressures. There is no air. We did an evac vacuum recharge on this system. Now, I want to hook the scanner up and see if the pressure sensor on the vehicle matches what we're seeing here, or at least is relatively close. So I'm underneath the HVAC module, AC refrigerant pressure, and I'm at 108. Now my atmospheric pressure where I'm at is about 12 PSI. So you will see a slight differential um, in that gauge, that pressure sensor, and what our gauge pressure is. So this, I'm not really too concerned with. Uh, a, a difference of 10 PSI between those readings is probably okay. So let's go ahead and start it up. We'll see what our vent temperature is. We'll look at our pressures underneath the hood. And even without looking at the scanner, because um, we know they match, at least right now, we'll, we'll see what we can go with. So if you don't have a scanner, then hopefully just looking at the pressures will help you guys along. So our low side is beginning to drop. I did kick the AC on. Now it's dropping slower than I would expect to see. Um, normally I would see this jump right down to around 40, maybe even 50, um, until we start cooling quite a bit. And then we should end up between, you know, 35 and 45, depending on your ambient temperature. The, the problem I'm seeing here is my high side went down instead of going up. So this is normally an indication of one, you don't have the high side hose connected properly. And if you have both these valves open, then they'll read equal pressure. But that's not the case. It is connected to this vehicle. And I have both of my valves closed. Now most of the new newer machines have automatic valving. So you don't even have to manually turn these valves. Or if you're looking at a manual gauge set, you will have the valves. So if you're seeing matching pressures, make sure your valves are shut so you can get an idea of what's actually going on. So now we are dropping down, we're almost 30 here, and we're hovering around 70 on the high side. That's still too low. What I wanna do now is verify if my scan tool matches this high side pressure. So I have my scan tool sitting here. I'll just throw up the uh, screen capture of this because it's kind of hard to see. Um, but on our high side, we are sitting around 70 PSI, but on our scan tool, we're showing 400 PSI. Uh, and this isn't a glitch. This isn't a glitch of the scan tool or of the gauges. It's actually a blockage or restriction between the sensor that the scan tool is reading and the high side pressure port. So let me shut the vehicle off and we will, we'll kind of go through where the lines are routed. And during this test, my ambient temperature is around 85 degrees and my current vent temperature was 54. If the outside air temp gets a little bit higher, our vent temperature is going to change and go up quite a bit. So I don't think I'll actually be able to show you all the lines, but the high side pressure port is on the out, outlet side of the condenser. My high pressure sensor, um, I might be able to see it from down below, but down there at the bottom of this engine is the AC compressor. The, the manifold hose set where that line comes off the compressor is that high pressure sensor. So it's measuring the output pressure of the compressor. My test port is the outlet pressure of the condenser. So since I'm seeing a drastic change in pressure from there to here, my restriction must be in that condenser. So what I wanna look for is a temperature change across that condenser, a drastic temperature change. It should be very, very minor. You know, you should have maybe, you know, 15 degrees um, across there, but 
if we see something really, really drastic, then that could indicate a bigger issue. Now in front of the radiator, we have the condenser. Now I'm underneath the vehicle looking up from the bottom and feeling the bottom of the condenser. Now the bottom of the condenser is kind of cool to the touch. And in general, this whole thing should be fairly warm. Now it's gonna be a little bit hotter at the top. Now this vehicle does have the transmission cooler built into the upper six inches of the condenser. Um, so we wanna disregard the temperature at that range. And the inlet of the actual condenser is down about six inches from the top of the, um, the unit itself. So we're gonna see the highest temperature right there. And as the refrigerant flows back and forth across this condenser, we will see a slight drop. So let me grab my thermal imager and we're just gonna take a look and see if we can see a drastic temperature change. Now I just took a couple snapshots with a thermal imager. Here we can see the lower portion of the AC condenser. Now the hottest part of my screen was 119, the coldest spot was 60. This condenser should never be 60 degrees while the air conditioning is running. And if we look just to the right of my crosshair, that is where the bottom of the filter dryer is. That's where our largest temperature change takes place. Now the hot spot in the top left could be the transmission cooler. Um, it's kind of hard to tell in this picture and I was unable to get a really good shot at this. Now here's a slightly different angle, a little bit closer. I'm not getting that upper section. So the condenser is a parallel flow design, which means it normally uses, you know, six to 10 rows and it's gonna go back and forth across the, the vehicle with that refrigerant cooling it down. Now we can see that there's a section of the condenser fins that are quite a bit higher right above where I'm pointing. Um, we can see that, that bright orange or yellow and it was 91 degrees right there. And then directly below that, the row below that, we were down to 73 degrees. Now here's a picture through the grill of the inlet and the outlet of the AC condenser. Now the smaller line is going to be the outlet, the larger line is gonna be our inlet. And as we transition to the color, we can see how much hotter the inlet is. The inlet's currently 155 degrees in this picture and the outlet is 74 degrees. Now I'm gonna take away the picture and we're just gonna go full thermal. You'll be able to see the bright spot right in the center of the screen where that 155 degrees is on our inlet. Down to the left is the coldest portion of the screen and that's 74 degrees and that's on our outlet of the condenser. Now we should see a slight difference but nowhere near this much. So this is definitely gonna have an issue of restriction in the condenser. Now, because I did one the other day, I, I know what I'm gonna find. Driver's side of the vehicle is the AC filter dryer. So there's a desiccate bag inside this side of the condenser. And then all the way out the bottom is a little filter. Now this is serviceable, but normally once this is plugged up, the compressor is failing and it's sending debris through the system. Now, if I change this out, we will likely you know, buy a little bit of time. So if the customer can't afford to do the repair right now uh, on the con compressor and replace the condenser, orifice tube, all that stuff, we might be able to buy some time. But I'll go ahead and recover all the refrigerant out of the vehicle and we'll pull this out of here and see what it looks like. Okay, the refrigerant has been recovered and now we have it evacuated into a vacuum. Uh, I'm not worried about pulling a total vacuum on this. In Colorado, we rarely get below 22 to 23 inches of vacuum anyways. So I'll just go ahead and shut the machine off here and I'll pull that filter dryer out. So there's a big 14 millimeter Allen on this dryer. Now you do not want to do this with any pressure on the system. Um, you got safety glasses on just in case, but if there's any pressure on the system, it's gonna blow this plug out. That hissing is just the vacuum that I pulled on it. It's sucking air in, not pushing it out. But if there was any pressure, it would spray uh, refrigerant and oil all over me. So in this lower plug is our filter unit. And then up above, that's gonna be the dryer. So it looks pretty well plugged up. I'll have to grab a pair of forceps to grab the dryer out of there. So with a pair of forceps, we can reach in there. Hopefully, it's up there quite a ways. We don't wanna tear the bag, because that'll make it more difficult. Twist it a little bit. And this bag might be, might be blown up. Okay, it's not wanting to come out. And I did end up tearing the, uh, the bag. So those desk beads are leaking out. There we go. So this actually didn't look too bad. Um, 
a little dark at the bottom here, but for some reason that bag was stuck, and this bag's actually really, really, really hard. Maybe it had some moisture in the system at one time, um, or someone put stop leak in it. Hopefully not, since I recovered it with my machine, but if we replace this uh, desk kit bag and that filter, we should be able to re restore some of this AC performance. So here is my new desiccate bag and my new filter. You can see in the filter, you know, the old one is plugged up, has that black coating on it. The new one was nice and clean. And then here is my uh, dryer unit. Now I'm not gonna open up the bag until I'm at the vehicle because we don't wanna expose this to moisture until we are ready to, you know, suck the vehicle down into a vacuum. And you can see those beads leaking out of the old one. Now in this bag, it's kind of pressurized. I'm not sure what's in there, but uh, once we're ready to get it installed, We'll tear that open. Now we do want to lube up the O-ring on that filter before we install it. So I'm going to use a special AC O-ring lube, put it on there. Um, if you have a little bit of AC oil, you can put that on the O-ring and some people even use dielectric grease. So now that we're ready for install, we'll go ahead and open up this bag and install the, the dryer right into the end of this condenser. And we'll shove it up in there and then the filter will push it up the rest of the way when we go to install that. I do have a little bit of lube on that O-ring. Start it by hand, and I didn't even look up the torque spec for this. We're just gonna snug it up, make sure it's not gonna fall out, uh, because this, this probably isn't going to be a permanent fix for this vehicle. Like I said, this will probably buy them some time, but we are likely seeing some sort of a compressor failure or a sealant has been you know, added to the vehicle with a refrigerant charge. Now once again, we pulled this down into a vacuum, make sure there's no moisture in the system, make sure there's no leaks, and then we're gonna recharge it to the proper amount. Now that I have it charged up in the vehicle running, our low side is around 35, uh, 32 to 35. Our high side is around 150. But if we look at the scan tool, our high side pressure was around 300. So we are still seeing a pressure differential between what the test port is showing and what the actual pressure sensor is showing. So there's still likely a slight blockage in that condenser, but at least now the AC performance is better. Now I forgot to take a clip of it, but my outlet temperature at the vent was about 45 degrees. On the scan tool, we could see that the evaporator core temperature was in the mid thirties. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.